This video is being made to complement lab six. From left to right, or from your right, we have cyclohexane and cyclohexene provided twice so that we can look for the test of saturation. Uh, we know that the structure of cyclohexane is one where everything has carbon to carbon single bonds. So that is a molecule that we would consider to be saturated based on that. Uh, a saturated molecule can be distinguished from an unsaturated molecule by the fact that uh, when we add a molecule like bromine to it, uh, the saturated molecule will have a difficult time going through the reaction and the whole process will be very slow. In contrast, cyclohexene, so the second one over here, is a unsaturated molecule, which means that somewhere in its structure it has a double or a triple bond. In the case of cyclohexene, there is a double bond in the structure. This molecule will react quickly with bromine, and we'll talk about the nature of those reactions uh, in a moment. So for reference, here is what bromine water looks like, and it has this distinctly orange color due to the presence of the bromine molecule, Br2. So if we add bromine into these solutions and the orange color persists, what that means is that the bromine is not able to break apart from the Br2 molecule and uh, it basically is identifying the molecule as being saturated. If the color disappears, what happens is the Br2 molecule is finding a double bond or a triple bond, is able to break apart and add itself into the molecule and that will decolorize the solution. Okay, so I'll add a few drops of bromine into each of these. And we can see that the color of the cyclohexane has persisted in being orange, and that is because the molecule is trying uh, to react. It is reacting very slowly through a reaction that we would call substitution. And eventually, what would happen is that this molecule uh, would eventually substitute into the cyclohexane molecule. That'll be explained when we do chemical reactions. But due to the slow nature of that reaction, the color that you see there is very orange because the Br2 molecule is still hanging around in there and persisting. Whereas if we have a look at cyclohexene, it is definitely decolorized, which means that the Br2 molecule has split apart. It has found its way to the double bond in the molecule and broken the double bond and added itself into the structure of the cyclohexane to form 1,2-dibromo cyclohexane. A second test that we can do for uh, this same property is to add a strong uh, oxidizing agent, which is potassium permanganate. And by adding that in there, again, if there is an extra source of electrons hanging around, because of course oxidizing agents, uh, are, you know, like pulling electrons away, then it will find those extra electrons and again decolorize the situation. Now, in this case, showing you the original color is not going to be helpful because you can't really see that, but you may remember from the titration, the redox titration, that potassium permanganate is purple in color. So we're going to be looking for the same type of situation. So again, over here I have cyclohexane, where I'll add a few drops of potassium permanganate in there. And then the next one is cyclohexene, doing the same thing. And We'll quickly shake those up. And you should notice that there is a distinct color difference between these. Okay, So the purple color is, again, because the molecule does not have any double bonds in there. And therefore, the, sorry, the um, cyclohexane cannot react effectively with the potassium permanganate and the purple color persists. The other uh, test tube here did have um, a double bond present with the cyclohexene. So the potassium permanganate did attack that effectively and formed a brown 
manganese dioxide precipitate, MnO2, and that gives it a brown color, and I don't know if you can even see that there's a bit of a precipitate hanging around in there as well. So that is our standard for how to figure out whether a molecule is saturated, so that's both of these situations here, or unsaturated, which is these situations here. Okay, and now we're going to test some unknown, so some known oils to see whether they have double bonds in their structure. So if you look at your evidence chart, you see that we have six oils that we are going to test, and we are going to test them in an order differently that you'll see in your chart. But we are going to start with the test tube on your far left, which is olive oil. So we're going to add a few drops of our bromine, aqueous bromine, to our olive oil. Add three drops. And then we're going to add three drops to mineral oil next. Number two is so mineral oil. We're going to let those just sit in there. Your third fat that we're testing is canola oil. And we'll take a look at these after a bit here. Next is corn oil, fourth one from your left. Second last is baby oil. And very last is paraffin oil. Okay. And so I'm going to give those a shake just to see whether the bromine is going to add onto the molecule at the double bond site. And we are looking for that color change that Mr. P showed you with the knowns and, and the controls where we knew that they had a double bond or not. a bit more. Okay. So if you take a look at the results after some agitation and a bit of energy that I'm adding I guess in a way just by agitating there. Okay. You can see the first oil, olive oil. It was a yellowy color to start with. Maybe you can take a look in the in the actual um, dropper here. The, the olive oil itself is a yellowy color. And so here's the color afterward. It is, it is similar to the original olive oil color. Next, we have mineral oil. That's the color of the mineral oil, still orange. Third, we have the canola oil, which has um, been turned colorless. Fourth, we have corn oil, colorless. Fifth, we have baby oil, orange still. And lastly, we have paraffin oil and orange still. And that, you can take a look at your at filling in your chart for the appearance before and after the addition of the bromine. You can always um, rewind the video if you want to take a look at the oil colors before we added the bromine as well. And then you can make your inter interpretation of whether these oils have a double bond or not. And so please use the term saturated or unsaturated in order to describe that. Thanks for watching.